The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome, everyone, to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, what do we have going on today? Well, certainly a little different uh, about what we've got going on, a little different. And that difference is volume. Uh, we came down about 2.5 billion shares on Friday. As I said, uh, most days since the, uh, the uh, troubles have begun, uh, doing 9, maybe 10 billion shares uh, as we start the show, uh, 7.2. So volume coming down, uh, I would assume as the volume comes down, we're also going to have a drop in volatility. The markets will probably get a little bit more predictable as we move along. But uh, not surprised, but we are going up a little higher on lighter volume. Do not be surprised to get a little bit of back end fill. <laughs> But uh, that's it. Oh, somebody's laughing in there about the uh, the slide for today. Whoever said one person can't change the world never ate an undercooked uh, undercooked bat. And of course, uh, what do we have? AIDS. I'm trying to think of the other disease came from Africa from eating undercooked what they call bush meat down there. Uh, Gorillas, that kind of stuff. Ebola. Yeah, three diseases from be people eating stuff. That's kind of why they don't show up here in the United States. Uh, we pick our uh, poison, and it's uh, pigs and cows. Maybe a few lambs. But uh, not a lot of weird stuff. We're not out there eating bats, causing trouble. But uh, certainly uh, the lighter of volume today... <laughs> Ducks and chicken. When's the last time someone had a duck uh, for dinner? I don't. I don't think. I mean, people eat chicken all the time. But again, kind of a kind of a known quantity. Everybody knows it, what it is. But again, undercooked uh, chicken, avian flu, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it didn't happen over here. Everybody's pretty good about cooking stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, if you've ever been over there. Uh, they got everything on the street on a stick, whether it's a crawly bug or some kind of disgusting creature that, if it was blown up a little bigger, would probably belo uh, bel uh, belong in Aliens, the movie. But uh, yeah, we kind of we kind of have uh, kind of have Elsie and Arnold, uh, and uh, I don't know, is there a famous chicken? The only one I can think of is is the cartoon one that was uh, always had his chest puffed up. I can't think of his name right now. Ch no, not Chicken Man. Uh, it was something else. It was, uh, eh, I'll think of it. Foghorn Leghorn, thank you. Is that, is that the most famous chicken? And, of course, if you live south of the border, your, uh, your country's song is about a cockroach. I think they need to, someone's got to get in there and talk to them about their branding down there south of the border. Uh, La Cucaracha, probably, uh, yeah, yeah, cockroach, probably not the best choice for a national song. I don't know how it became one. Uh, anyway, I just wonder, literally everything I have, I have a uh, insatiable curiosity about what stuff happens. Anyway, uh, as we said, uh, very different out here today in that we have volume. We did see volume kind of dry up at the end of the day on Friday, and that's when we saw the uh, push lower. I suspect uh, we're probably going to see people 
try to uh, take shots at the market at the end of the day again like friday but uh, you know what we're getting into uh, a more probably more predictable market over the last couple of days Going forward, uh, Wednesday really starts fun buying, although it could have started today. Generally, everybody waits till the, at least the first now. Uh, and uh, eh, a lot of times they wait until the third. But uh, we'll see how that works out. Anyway, volume, kind of the big part of the story. We've got a lot of tech news that I'll bring up that happened over the weekend in conjunction with some of the stocks that we watch. Uh, but uh, some... So I'm kind of, uh, I'm going to say uh, uh, the ground has changed in a couple of those sectors. And what else? Eh, we'll do a little history and then we'll get in to the meat. And we're not talking bat meat or some other kind of disgusting flying creature. And doesn't everybody just know that bats are rats of the air? That's all they are. They're rats with wings. Ugh. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Anyway, what else uh, going on today? Well, in 1951, the first commercial computer, the UNIVAC, which stands for Universal Automatic Computer, and it was anything other than automatic, if you've ever seen one. Uh, the console was a converted, one of those converted steel desks that the government always bought. Anywhere you ever went, you saw those kind of, what is that, kind of a grayish green uh, metal desk with metal drawers and metal slides. Uh, you know, today you get a desk, and there's no ducking under it when the nuke goes off. It won't do you any good. These things, they were meant to hold a building up uh, and last for 40 years. I bet they're still in use somewhere in the government. But uh, those big steel desks, anyway, uh, they just took the lid of it off and turned it into a giant console. Uh, the actual machine was 25 feet by 50 feet, contained 5,600 tubes, 18,000 crystal diodes, and 300 relays, utilized serial circuitry, a two, a blistering 2.2 megahertz bit rate, which uh, kind of reminded me of the first Commodore 64, wasn't it? two megahertz, and it had an additional uh, storage capacity of 1,000 words or 1,200 characters. It utilized uh, a mercury delay line, uh, and I don't think people understood how tough it was to actually have kind of real-time memory back then. Uh, anyway, they used several things. Uh, one of them was uh, just a long piece of uh, copper wire. Uh, if it was long enough, you could get the delay maybe a thousandth of a second, and a lot of times that's all you needed. Anyway, uh, it had magnetic tape and uh, no screen, just a typewriter, of course, back then. Uh, but uh, the U.S. Census Bureau used it and uh, bought it on, and had it delivered on this day in 1951. Used it until the census of 1970, when, of course, uh, eh, it was well overdue. And, of course, uh, yeah. All this stuff led from the census, uh, which uh, started in 1890, buying all the punch card machines back then to do the, uh, the census then. We'll be back in a minute. We'll get into a lot of charts and stuff that's happening in technology. Uh, we'll start uh, Microsoft, Intel, AMD, because I think that's where the action is from over the weekend. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. Um, oh, we're done with this. So we can move on. As I said, I wanted to get into some technology because... Um, Probably some of the best money I've ever made has been when everybody's focused on something else. Uh, and uh, whether it's burying uh, bad information on a Friday uh, evening after the markets close, and most people uh, may not see it uh, ever, uh, I find that's always a good time to check for the really bad news uh, that they have. Uh, but what was interesting to me, of course, is over the weekend, uh, where are the reviews coming in for AMD's new uh, chip? Um, had a lot of people ask me about Christmas, about uh, buying uh, new laptops. And I said, well, it depends on what you want. If you want a really fast laptop, uh, then, you know, what you probably want to wait for a few months. Well, uh, the apparently those laptops from AMD are shipping on their new R9 series. And it's breathtaking in comparison uh, to what Intel has now. And if you want to you know, get a little background about how this is going to affect Intel and AMD, uh, two-thirds of all uh, PCs being sold today are laptops. Only about a third are actually desktops. Um, most of that Desktop business, of course, is into business and carries higher margins. So it's actually kind of about maybe 50-50 when you get done. But uh, for retail consumers, the laptop is a, you know, it's half the business. Now, we talk about how Intel owns the server business, but you know what? You let one part of the business go and you open the wrong door and the other wrong dog does come home. Now, AMD has been incredibly aggressive in the last, let's call it 18 months on both pricing and performance. Uh, there is literally no reason uh, except one to really buy uh, an Intel processor for your home. And that is if you're like a YouTuber and compressing stuff, the uh, 90, what is a 9900 uh, is a little bit more efficient for about 200 bucks more than the top end uh, AMD 
desktop processor. So if you're all out uh, compressing things left and right, uh, doing video, a small advantage, I don't know if the price advantage is there. Um, one of the big problems is heat. And is, some people have asked me why I keep on telling everybody that buys a desktop for a home now to uh, get water cooling in it is that the heat these things are putting off is pretty big. And if you're going to get a uh, air-cooled uh, heat spreader to uh, get enough uh, heat off of a desktop processor these days, you're going to have four or five pounds hanging off the motherboard uh, just for the amount of metal you're going to need to move that heat. So not a great idea for long-term uh, use. And, you know, for 100 110 bucks, you can buy a radiator and a, uh, uh, a well, what they call an all-in-one, which means that all the water's already in it. It's all sealed. All you have to do is put it in place of the uh, uh, heat, uh, heat uh, yeah, what am I trying? The uh, cooler is the one I'm looking for. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, heat pipes and stuff like that. But still... If you're talking about desktop processors, so AMD, what is uh, really their claim to fame here now, and that is they continue to re reduce the die size, which means that they get to reduce the amount of power that the processor takes, which means that they can also limit amount of heat <coughs> when you're doing these big things like compressing videos. You're talking about things run 20 minutes. Uh, to two days, depending on how much you're doing. And that doesn't leave a lot of room for uh, the processors to cool down over time. So again, if you're just doing you know, word processing, you're probably not going to buy a high-end PC already. But the big money is in those processors that cost $500 to $1,000. Uh, for 1500 bucks now, these new AMD processors in the mobile business mean that there's literally zero reason on any one of the processors from the cheapest to the highest that you would actually want to buy an Intel processor. So kind of a, I think kind of a big deal out here. Let's take a look at Intel. Now, again, the retail part of their business, maybe 20% of the profit market's kind of popping up here. Uh, unless Intel starts really being aggressive. And in fact, they're, uh, first and second CEO had a, a plaque on the wall that said, if we don't eat our own lunch, someone else will. And uh, for, you know, for whatever it was, 1968, 69, through a couple of years ago, they were incredibly uh, competitive in making sure no one came in and uh, they left the wrong door uh, open. Uh, well, they certainly have with AMD, and the question is whether an AMD is going to use this money to go after the server business, and maybe Intel doesn't have the long term that we thought. Uh, their corporate culture was very good over a number of years, uh, but you know, I've said it since uh, they threw the last CEO out by trying to dig up something 10 years ago uh, that happened, well, uh, now almost 12 years ago. Uh, that really didn't matter, uh, but it was a corporate uh, insider political fighting, uh, and uh, the CFO, of course, becoming the CF or the CEO, I never liked. Uh, it uh, they always seem to make the wrong decisions, uh, but uh, don't look it anyway. Uh, of course, uh, Microsoft a nice pop today, and I didn't see any particular reason other than the fact I think a lot of people were shorting it on Friday thinking it was going lower. You're still back in to this gap down that goes back to the 13th of this month. Um, it went down on 87 million shares. You're up on about, uh, what, 41 million shares. So kind of like I said, the easiest part of this money is over. Uh, but uh, you know what? It was the number one performing stock before this all happened. Uh, it will probably be the number one stock going forward until at least uh, the next uh, reporting area. But again, uh, when you're looking at people that are probably the least affected uh, by this, it's Microsoft. They do about 10% of their business in hardware. 
that could be affected over uh, seas. But uh, at this point, not much going on uh, with that. I mean, they do sell some laptops and other stuff, but uh, probably, I wouldn't say impervious, but probably least it affected of the tech stocks going forward. And I would say that when things are bad, the worst thing you want to do is have the wrong product going forward. Uh, when we get back to Intel, the only good thing is that they're coming out with another processor to compete, but it's going to be late second quarter. So it may be the middle of the summer. And guess what? When you come out with the middle of summer, you're already talking about selling a lot of laptops to kids going back to school, everybody buying them. Uh, it is a very long six months before Intel actually has laptops out there to compete. We'll be back in a minute. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Go get them, folks. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we come back, we'll take a quick look at the indexes, which probably haven't moved that much, yeah. Uh, hanging out at 26.03 at the S&P 500 in the cash, uh, 4.35 NASDAQ uh, 208. And a uh, question about uh, why I always use the cash, and that is the futures are too thin. Uh, you can move the futures around, especially after hours, uh, with maybe 10 or 20 grand. It's pretty, it's pretty much easy to move the markets around. You don't have to be a big shot. So now to move an actual market around, 
much different. So I tend to uh, tend to kind of discount a lot of moves outside market hours just because I know that it doesn't take that much to drive the futures market anymore. And probably for, what, two, two and a half years, uh, they've been thin. So uh, not a whole lot going on there. So next question out here uh, is, uh, to, 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 there are new desktop computers using more solid state drives. In fact, I think they all are. Which companies would benefit from that? Memory companies. The, the, I thought for a while that there was going to be a big business in uh, getting the controller chips correct uh, in the SSDs. Uh, and that would be some kind of black art and magic. It was not. Uh, the only difference is how many of those chips that you put in, so how fast the drive can update the memory in those. Uh, so, no, I don't think that there's uh, anything other than Micron uh, and Intel, which makes its own memory. In fact, uh, Intel is the biggest memory manufacturer uh, and Intel probably has the best opportunity uh, to put AMD down, uh, but they continue to kind of uh, fiddle why Rome burns. They've got that great uh, uh, new memory, which is a thousand times faster, but have failed to really uh, exploit it. I know it takes uh, both software uh, new hardware and literally everything on a motherboard and a processor. But uh, maybe people don't want it, but man, I mean, they do sell it and it's not, it's not cheap, but it's not horribly expensive either. Uh, but the new MEM resistor technology uh, where your computer could auto, uh, automatically shut off uh, for days at a time and you hit a button and it instantly be live again uh, makes a lot of sense, especially for sell, uh, saving power, stuff like that. I know eventually that stuff's going to make its way out, uh, but it seems like they've dragged their feet as long and hard as they can. Uh, but uh, two, the big two manufacturers of memory, uh, Intel and Micron, and it doesn't seem like the controller chips for that memory, which is all that uh, that there is. There's memory and a controller chip, and that's it. And, you know, the software for wear uh, leveling, some other stuff in there to make the drives last longer. Eh, yeah, is it in there? How many of those chips you put in is really what you pay for, for the most part? And, like, if you look at the, in fact, I actually bought one. Ah! Actually, just have it laying here. I uh, bought a new uh, 860 Evo. Uh, for my database needs. And that's uh, got a little bit more expensive called VNAN uh, memory in it, uh, which is a little faster. But, you know, this in the scheme of things, is it a big deal? No. More important is how many of those controller chips, because that's how many uh, blocks it can write to at one time. So and it's kind of like hiring four guys to dig a ditch instead of one. And some of the cheap SSDs only have one or two controllers and there are some of the bigger ones have four or eight. And it just, it, by the time you get to eight, you're pretty much saturating what you can get in a uh, SSD using a, a, a SATA controller line. Of course, most of these now are actually just chips, little PC boards with all the chips on them that literally go on the motherboard of either the laptop or the uh, PC itself. In fact, all the PCs now, you really don't have the traditional memory sticks that you put everything else in. You just have the, just to uh, have, uh, uh, the, you know, you don't have a hard drive or something that looks like that Samsung. You literally have a PC board that's about, what, one inch by, I'm going to say by three, four inches, and that pops into the motherboard, and that's your hard drive, and that's about it. Okay, so that's it. Uh, Micron, Intel, big winners uh, in uh, memory. Uh, Intel could be a huge winner, but they're going to have to actually launch something with that new technology for MEM resistors, which once you write them, uh, you don't have to keep power to them. But I don't know why it's – it makes me think of that biblical story of the uh, uh, guy, that, uh, the uh, son that kept his uh, 
lamp underneath the uh, bushel basket. It wasn't a lamp, wasn't it? I'm starting to confuse all these stories anymore. Anyway, Micron, fairly good. Uh, anyway, I'm not exactly sure a question about why Microsoft popped today. I didn't see anything special on it other than the fact that I think that uh, uh, just the fact that they've held up probably better than uh, most others, uh, even though they were first to kind of get hit by being up in Washington. They're kind of the first to be out of it and uh, the the tougher place to be now is in San Francisco. So that's it. Uh, da, da, da. Yep. Okay. Da, 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 da. Question about that. What do I know about it? I talked about this last week. I don't know a lot about it other than what I saw. Um, I mean... The malaria drugs that everybody's talking about, uh, Novartis, uh, apparently a lot of people had been doing uh, one-off studies all over the United States. Rather than watch their patients die, uh, they got permission to do this over the last one. And uh, I guess this, the big guy here that I'm reading about today is from Kansas City, uh, University of Kansas. And he says... Uh, uh, the drug has this nice safety profile, and he's had a bunch of people that have recovered because of it. So who knows? I I was kind of surprised to see uh, the big head cheese of all of the response to this instantly say it didn't work, which he had no idea about. I have no idea that it works, other than a bunch of people all over the world using it, and they all saying it works. So maybe everybody's a little upset. But again, eh, anytime you talk to a doctor or a lawyer, they always have kind of an alternative uh, motive in hand. And that is, uh, if you ever ask a lawyer to literally sign any document, they'll tell you no, because there's no upside uh, in them saying yes. And if a doctor, you tell a doctor you have one drink, he assumes you're an alcoholic. If you just have to lie to him and assume that by lying to him, that, you know, that he'll believe that you only have one before you go to bed at night, which you actually do. So, of course, everybody's always lying to everybody. Kind of what House was all about, right? All his patients lied to him. Always lied. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we have a question about uh, IBM, or not IBM, uh, Boeing. Uh, and uh, what do I think of the retrace so far? Uh, you bounced all these uh, gaps that went up to 186.48 on the 26th. You got two pullbacks. You got, uh, I would have liked to have seen a little bit lighter volume today. Uh, but if you're just looking at a uh, standard retrace in this, um, the last bounce higher. What do you got? 137.74 is a 50% retrace. Uh, you never tested $89. And you know what? You got about a 50% chance that it tastes, uh, tests $89. Now, does it take a year to get there? I don't know. But, you know, you, you buy the dips and you sell the rips. And if you get another good dip in this, the volume all dries up, then that tells you something. Uh, like I said, a little bit too much volume today, which makes me think that you've got the rest of this gap open. And that uh, takes you down to maybe 130-ish. And when you look at here, a, uh, uh, a 6 eight. Uh, 618 retracement takes you to 126.24. And that's a, there's a gap there, too. I would say if you were going to take a shot at it, thinking that uh, the stimulus, bailout, whatever you want to call it, uh, does take shape. Everybody gets back in the air and we'll get ready to go and, uh, and, and not just sit, sit around and wish and talk about defeat on a daily basis which drives me nuts. I don't know how anybody can watch CNN. It's nothing but defeat and dis despair. And uh, yeah, they were showing over the weekend, they got their hands caught. I think it was CNN uh, showing a, an Italian hospital and saying it was an American hospital. I, you just, I can't watch cable news anymore. I'll read stuff, but uh, I read it and try to, try to, uh, I don't know, watch a video of, nice uh, puppies or uh, a beautiful field or anything other than just wallowing in the sorrow. And I can't take it anymore. And I just never was one of those kind of people to look for the absolute worst. And I'm rationally optimistic. But uh, I can't, you know, I can't, I just can't do it. So uh, there's some questions in the email today about answering questions about what everybody's saying. And yeah, I, I kind of read. I don't watch it. Don't watch Fox. Don't watch CNN. The only difference between the two, one hates America and one probably loves it too much. And that's it. Okay, so what else do we have? Eh, got in that. Okay. Question about Twitter. TWTR. Um. This is a bet. Um, if they can force uh, the CEO out or to take uh, 
money for uh, political advertising coming up for uh, this year. You know what? Uh, it's a $60 stock. If they won't bend to taking political advertising, then it hovers down here. Maybe they can do some things at the edge. Uh, but uh, if they don't, I think Dorsey's out. Uh, and you get another CEO that will. So Dorsey says yes to political advertising. The thing will probably not stop running until after the election. Uh, he gets fired. Uh, any CEO coming in, they'll have ask him the first thing. There's just so much money to be made, billions and billions of dollars on political advertising, not just the presidential side. Um, so you're kind of just going out here sideways today. Uh, I th think that uh, the whole coronavirus has bought uh, Dorsey some time, but I don't think that much. I would, I would say that if he doesn't make a fairly good, uh, what would you call it, presentation on how, where he thinks the future of this company is, uh, that he's gone in 30, 45 days. That would be it. But uh, again, you may have another 30 days of sitting on your hands. The longer it goes sideways, the more I'd be interested in probably buying it if the volume dries up and it can't go any lower. Uh, to, to, to what else do I have out here? Uh, okay, question about hard drives, because we were talking about them earlier with Western Digital. Um, you're right into the confluence area, which is, like I said, you want to be looking at these and selling right into them without hesitation. Uh, this one was a little wider, so maybe not as good, but still not a bad one. $48.34 to $44.77 was the range. You got to $46.19, so you got dead into it, and that was kind of it. Um, that was it. Uh, Yeah, what do you got? Okay. Got a couple of days with no volume out here. You know, ideally, I'm not going to be short anything at this time. But Western Digital, uh, Seagate, its brother, are both eventually gone, right? As I said before, the only people that really make money in the SSD market is a little bit for the people that sell the controllers and a lot of it because those are only like five bucks. And the most of it is uh, people that sell the memory. Uh, you got a nice pop on this one. Actually, the energy not too bad until today. And we'll see how the volume ends up. But you're going through a five and a quarter million share high. That was on March 13th. Yeah, uh, you're doing it with 2 million shares right now. Um, like I said, a lot of these stocks, just the easy part of the money is over. You're probably going to get some big whipsaw in a lot of these that are at resistance. But again, you got a couple more days to go for a little bit of fun buying. That's the last huge uh, amount of money probably going to be dumped into the market for, well, until our, everybody gets back to work. So I'll uh, keep a look at that. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, you can email me at path at TFNN. Uh, the negative waves. Yeah, too many negative waves. Uh, the put call ratio uh, for the VIX, which is really what I watch, is the question here. Let me get this up. Um, every time we've had a huge spike in the put call ratio, We've had a rally that's lasted several days. So uh, let me go back and show it to you here. It's the uh, red line uh, down here. The blue line's the actual equities. And it doesn't vary that much. It's pretty, but the, the, the big deal is when everybody gets bearish, you get a couple of days of higher, and then the market rolled over. Same thing. Uh, you know, for the last three times. But you had three times, and then that was the bottom, that last spike. We'll be back in a minute.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And uh, we were talking about... Uh, I've got a question about SMHs and uh, applied materials. You pretty much overshot uh, the uh, first confluence level in AMAT. Uh, you did so with some fairly decent volume. Once you do that, then that is support. So you're looking at uh, 2566 is uh, kind of support now. If you break that, then you could go back, fill this entire gap, which takes you back to 39. So let's take a quick look at the SMHs. And again, they kind of were the first uh, that everybody ran to, mostly because uh, that area of the world had already gone through the worst of it. Now, eh, for the most part, uh, they're trying to get back on their feet. Uh, we've got a couple more weeks to go to find the peak of the mountain uh, before we go back down into the trough of the summer. Anyway, the uh, semiconductors, um, let's do this here, be a better way. Uh, right into hard resistance, like I said, this is the easy money is kind of over. 117.46, is that right? No, 117.63 to 122 is resistance. Uh, 122.52. You got to 122. You pull back a little bit. I'd like to see a little back and fill, maybe back to 
112 ish if we could get there 112.39 on a light volume retrace would be a nice setup for an abc in the smhs uh the question is whether we get that or not i don't know how soon all the cash starts hitting the market and how how often or how soon everybody gets back to work but uh, from the traffic I saw out today and last week, uh, at least this part of Florida uh, has a lot of people still working. It's not as bad as it was the, uh, the uh, handful of days before. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. That's got a new meaning now with bat in it, doesn't it? Bat.